Roll Tide, everybody. I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. If you're an Alabama fan or just a football fan in general, we think you'll enjoy the show. And one of the great things about our podcast format is that you can listen anytime you like because every episode is available 24-7. You can find us in the podcast section of iTunes or at BigBrainsMedia.com or you can go to our Bama Talk Facebook page and hit the Listen to the Show button. Get your gridiron groove on with Bama Talk and Roll Tide. This is the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Wednesday, the 18th of September. I'm James Spann. Very quiet weather today, and more than likely it stays quiet through Friday, but Saturday could be kind of a soaking type day with a lot of rain as we start the weekend. In the tropics, very interesting as well. Let's get in there and take a look at things. We'll check the sky cam shots as we peer out the window this afternoon. Uh, that's coming from Inverness, the sky there partly sunny. There's the Kalman sky cam, the sky generally cloudy where they're sitting in the upper 70s and down south. That's our sky cam at Gulf Shores. Uh, a few patches of blue, but again, the sky mostly cloudy. Uh, the weather should stay relatively dry down there tomorrow, but rain chances will increase beginning Friday and over the weekend as a, a surface front approaches and a broad surface low forms down there in that region. All right, that's the deal today. we got upper ridging across the Gulf Coast. Big trough back in the Pacific Northwest. That will be playing a factor in the rain opportunities as we start the weekend. Temperatures are kind of all over the board, uh, partly because of the wedge. That's the uh, cold air damming effect with the cooler air coming in from the east. And also because of differential heating. Some spots are cloudy and some spots are mostly sunny. Again, the warm spot, Tuscaloosa, they've got 88, but it's only 79 for Fort Payne, Cullman, and Haleyville at mid-afternoon. Slight risk of severe weather. Way up north, parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota tomorrow. That risk expands onto the east, but uh, along the front. But we don't expect any severe weather problems down here as the weekend begins. But rain, yep. Uh, here's the rain for the next five days. This is valid through Monday morning at seven o'clock, and this has got rain amounts of about uh, one and a half to two and a half inches across the state. And almost all of that will come Saturday, Saturday night, maybe into part of the day Sunday. Uh, and we'll take a look at the modeling here in just a second. But on the tropical uh, scene, we've got to check that quickly. Umberto. Tropical storm, it's been out in the middle of nowhere, and guess what? It stays in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of the Atlantic. Of course, the one we are watching is the disturbance that's coming off the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. That thing is beginning to emerge into the Bay of Campeche, the far southwest Gulf of Mexico. And You want to see a classic spaghetti model? How about that? That's a spaghetti plot. Uh, the steering currents are weak, and the tropical models just tend to, uh, you know, keep this thing down there in the southwestern gulf for the next uh, three four maybe five days and uh, you know will it go into mexico sure it could do that will it try and pull northeast will a chunk of it break away and uh, the thing not develop at all uh, here's a look at the uh, incep ensemble guidance and again uh, that's the ultimate bowl of spaghetti right there uh, generally speaking it, most of the members just leave it down there in the southwestern gulf and uh, it's just too early to call. I do think a pretty good chance this thing becomes Tropical Storm Jerry. And uh, we'll take a look at uh, the modeling now. In fact, let's take a look at the GFS, the Global Forecast System. This is valid tomorrow at 1 o'clock local time. Upper high around New Orleans. Nice trough across the high plains. And down below that should be a dry day. Sunny with a high in the mid-80s. I say sunny, but partly to mostly sunny. No significant chance of rain. This is Friday. Uh, we're dry. Got the cold front approaching from the northwest. You can see uh, the front from near Madison, Wisconsin, down to Oklahoma City and uh, Lubbock, Texas. Got a broad surface low that's south of Brownsville, Texas, that could be our friend, uh, uh, maybe Jerry. Uh, now, let's go to uh, late Friday night. This is just after midnight Friday night. This is 1 a.m. Saturday. Uh, and you can see the rain entering northwest Alabama. So, Based on the GFS, we'll get the Friday night football games in with no rain uh, for just about all of Alabama, uh, which is a good thing. Now, this is Saturday, 1 o'clock, Saturday afternoon. A 1,006 millibar surface low is developing on the front uh, over northwest Alabama, and that just looks like a soaker uh, during the day Saturday. And uh, certainly a setup where the rain could be pretty hefty. Rain amounts of at least one to two inches. There could be some thunder, no severe weather. Uh, and again, if you've got a college football game you want to attend, just kind of look at that and you get an idea what's going to be happening there. Uh, let's go to Saturday evening at 7 o'clock. You know, uh, Alabama's game kicks off at uh, 6. 
and the, this is showing, you know, the really heavy rain kind of moving out of West Alabama around 7 o'clock. So for the Alabama game, I still think we need to mention a pretty good chance of rain. We can be much more specific tomorrow and Friday. It could be that the heaviest rain stops by the time the game begins, but we're sure not going to drop the chance of rain based on this. We've seen other looks that are slower, but just maybe the really heavy rain pushes east of Bryant-Denny Stadium by 7 or 8 o'clock. Um, for the fun of it, I thought I'd show you the uh, NAM. Uh, this is valid Saturday evening at 7 o'clock. It is radically drier, and it's got a well-developed tropical system. That means Tropical Storm Jerry down there in the southwestern Gulf, and the front is very inactive here. But that model is an outlier and is rejected. Look at the Canadian model. Uh, again, this is Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock. Got soaking rains falling across the state with a broad surface load down to the south. And uh, just for the fun of it, there's a look at the uh, European, and it's very wet. So the Canadian, the European, the GFS all look very wet Saturday into at least part of Saturday night uh, with a, a good soaking, and we'll roll with that in the forecast. So just plan on taking the rain gear to any uh, college football game around the Deep South. Hopefully for the uh, Auburn game down at LSU, the worst of the rain will be over by kickoff down there. That's a possibility, but we sure can't guarantee that at this stage of the game. Now, this is Sunday, and the GFS is considerably drier. We've seen a lot of different looks in here, but on this run, it's got a broad surface low around Panama City, uh, the bigger rains over Georgia and the Carolinas, and we're relatively dry. So if this verifies, uh, rain will be ending very early Sunday, and maybe we'll see a few peaks of sun. And by the way, Saturday, we won't get out of the 70s because of the rain. Sunday, the high would be close to 80 if the sun can break out. And here's Monday, a uh, surface low is... Uh, on the coast of North Carolina, and we're dry. Another low is down there in the Gulf. And, you know, the question is, could that be a tropical storm, Jerry, that 1,008 millibar low that's uh, located west of Tampa, south of Destin? Uh, the GFS really doesn't develop it very much, but Monday would be dry. Here's Tuesday. That broad surface low moves over toward Tampa Bay and Fort Myers. Uh, we're dry. And Wednesday, a week from today, looks fairly dry. It's a little bit of residual moisture, but no forcing, so uh, no rain expected. Highs early next week, low to mid-80s. All right, this is October 4th, into the forecast. Still got a flat ridge down here. The main storming is up, is up north. And the big news there, look at the cold air coming down through Montana and the Dakotas. That's easily the coldest air of the season, if that happened to be correct. And that'd be a frosty look out there. And that makes sense since we're getting into October. Tis the season as we get set for that colder air to keep on dropping south. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes in the blog next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you can, catch us on ABC 3340 News this evening on the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening, and God bless.